Good morning, Steve. Right, Box. Call me back. Good morning, Lorelei. What's this bilge I hear about your selling a novel? What novel? Oh, every reporter has a novel in his trunk. Yeah, from the ones I've read, there's a good place for them. I thought you'd be pleased. I am pleased. I congratulate you. Only I hate to see you waste your time writing tripe. Tripe? Look, Lorelei, you're a newspaper woman and a good one. That's for novels. Now, wait a minute, Steve. That's the way you feel about it, as of right now, I'm not a newspaper woman. What's that? I'm through. Oh, now, just a second, Lorelei. You can't do that. And why not? I have another novel in work and... Look, Lorelei, if it's a raise you want, $10 a week. No. $20? No, Steve, I'm through. Very well, if your mind's made up, you'll have to give me two weeks' notice. Okay. Two weeks. Steve, I... Oh, <laughs> good morning, Lorelei. Good morning, Mr. Peabody. I uh, hear you sold your novel. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Peabody. Great girl, Lorelei. She's made a fine police reporter, hasn't she? She certainly has, and I'll sure miss her. Uh, that is the newspaper, I'll miss her. A miss her? Yeah, she's given me two weeks' notice. But you're not going to let her leave, are you? Not if I can help it. Good. Now, by the way, Steve, uh, did you ever meet my niece, Susan Peabody? No, I don't believe so. I brought her here from California a year ago, been putting her through a journalism course at State College. Now she wants to quit school and uh, take a job on the paper. I have a full staff, Mr. Peabody. Oh, just a minute. After all, Steve, I own this paper and... Uh... According to the terms of our contract, all hiring is in my hands. I don't need a cub reporter. I'm not running a finishing school in journalism. And if your niece wants a job on a newspaper, let her try the Chronicle. I was hoping you'd see it that way. Well, I'd much rather she stayed in college. Well, why don't you tell us, though? Well, it's uh, hard for me to say no to one of the family. I'd rather you did it. She's waiting outside. <laughs> There's anything I'm good at around a newspaper at saying no. You'll need to be good, Steve. Susan's quite aggressive. I'm afraid her folks haven't been too strict with her. She needs discipline. Come in, dear. Steve? My niece, Susan Peabody. Oh, how do you do, Miss Peabody? How do you do, Mr. Wilson? I'll leave you two to talk things over. Well, it's nice to see you. Uh, sit down, sit down, please. Thank you. So, you want to be a newspaper woman, hmm? There's nothing I'd rather do. Well, the journalism course at State is excellent. But it's so slow and so expensive. I hate being a burden on Uncle Amos. I want to earn my own way, and I want to earn it working on a newspaper. A very commendable ambition, Miss Peabody. But I wonder if you know that there's more to being a reporter than sticking a press card in your hat and going to all the better fires. <laughs> you sound like Uncle Amos. Now listen, Mr. Wilson, if I'm going to work for you, we should have no secrets. I'm in a terrible jam. Oh? For the past six months, I've been working on the Lindbury Eagle, cub reporter, $16 a week. Lindbury, it's a pretty tough town. Is it? I really wouldn't know. I only worked on campus news. But I cut so many classes, I flunked out of college. Oh, that's bad. Does your uncle know? Not yet. And if you'll give me a job, I won't have to tell him. Please, Mr. Wilson. I simply can't let him find out what's happened. He'd be so disappointed and so hurt. Steve, what goes? Lorelei says she's quitting in two weeks. Lorelei quitting? <laughs> Don't take any bets on her, Fletcher. Oh, come in, Fletch. Come in. Uh, you want to meet your new police reporter. <laughs> What do you think? You suppose those Chronicle boys don't want me in the press room? Hello, Louie. What's new? The dicks say Herrick's ready to sing on the bank caper. Better check with the DA. Oh, thanks, Louie. Okay, babe. No charge. See, Steve? Uh-huh. You pleased about your novel? Of course he was pleased. Like you'd be pleased at losing a pot on Four Kings. You didn't quarrel with them, did you? No, I didn't quarrel. I quit. Quit? I thought you and Steve were sort of... Don't exaggerate, Wally. Well, if you're really quitting, that's the best news I've heard since the mayor tripped over that cornerstone and broke his leg. You couldn't mean you haven't enjoyed working with me. Oh, we haven't got anything against you, Goldilocks. We don't want a dame on police. Any dame. Dames upset our style. You know, this press room used to be a nice, rough, dirty dump until you moved in, Lorelei. Now it's, well, it's like a tea room, only we ain't got any tea. You got any tea, Harvey? No tea, Wally. When are you gonna quit? Two weeks. You'll never make it. Nobody ever quit the newspaper racket. 
Hildy Johnson tried to quit. <laughs> and look what happened to him. Somebody stole his watch. <laughs> remember? I remember. Hey, somebody stole my watch. Well, that Louis Sneed, that thieving rat. I'll chew him up and spit him off the 14th floor. Oh, by the way, call your office. Steve's been trying to get you. Thanks. You know, all I, with you gone, things aren't going to be the same around the old press room. Steve Wilson, please. You mean you'll miss me? Mm-hmm. Like I'd miss the toothache. Steve Lorelei. I've just sent over your replacement. So soon? Two weeks is little enough time to learn to play speed, so please cooperate, will you? I'll be glad to. Just a gag, he says. Okay, so a sock on the jaw. Just a gag. <laughs> well, why the sour face, Goldilocks? Won't the auditor okay your swindle sheet? Steve's sending over a new police reporter, and I'm supposed to break him in. You the face a nice homey touch, don't you think? Yes, like a gutter. Well, I hope he plays poker. <laughs> Bad poker, that is. Well, uh, we'll find out. Oh, yeah, and phone the janitor, Harvey. Tell him to bring back our customer door. What are you doing in Big Town? Came over to make a little payoff for the boss. Doing anything later? I'll be tied up all day and you know it. Maybe some other time then. Where you want it, boys? Where it belongs, right in the middle of the room. Miss Kilburn? Yes. I'm Susan Peabody. Mr. Wilson sent me over to cover police. How do you do, Miss Peabody? Hey, Miss Peabody, it's my uncle. Miss Peabody, I want you to meet Wally Blake and Harvey Cushman of the Chronicle. Hello. How do you do, Susan? <laughs> as fine a pair of jackals as ever stood a cub reporter's throat. Oh, no, you don't want to pay any attention to Lorelei, Miss Peabody. Or a couple of worms, sure, but uh, as long as you don't try to step on us, I... Uh... That's box three. I'll show you how to find the fire. Tea room. Well, Jake Sebastian, ain't you off the reservation? How are things in Lindbury? Sucker still playing poker? Go get lost, will you? Sure, you know any good places to get lost in? Okay, okay. Thank you. What could you learn on a rag like that? Oh, you'd be surprised. The Eagle Orchid is only a block from the Winners Club. Oh, one of those poker joints. Hello, Morgue, Lorelei Kilburn. Anything? 21. Hold the suspect. No make on the license. No, that's just the police radio. Pay no attention to it. So you play poker. Harvey? Susan, I have a woman beaten up a drunken brawl. She may die and I float her at the morgue. Someone might think they paid us to work in this job. Louis, this is Susan Peabody, our new police reporter. Susan Louis Sneed. If he happens to like you, Louis is the best news source in the city hall. Pleased to meet you. Did you say Peabody? My uncle owns the Illustrated Press. What do we do about this law? Better get upstairs, boys. The DA dug up a hot lead of that Boyle murder. Wait a minute, boys. Susan's going with you. How come? One of Steve Wilson's brilliant plays, Leading with a Queen. Rewrite, please. Thinks I'll get jealous and change my mind about quitting. Hello, McCabe. I have a couple of yarns for the last run. Uh, Mabel Seely, 24 of 519 Jameson Place. Jameson Place. We moved to the emergency with cuts, bruises, and lacerations. Husband John B. Seely held in the city jail, both drunk. No, no identification on the body. That's all, McCabe. Hmm. Interesting. In the world are you talking about? Am I talking again? Do you ever stop? Want to play a couple of hands of cards? You know I haven't got time to play cards. I got a hunch it might be a good idea for you to start practicing. Here's my five. I'm in. I'll call. Full house. King's on the roof. No. 
your deal, McGonagall. 42, 10th and Oak, a man down. Ambulance, 14. Right. Well, little poker? It ain't post office, Doc. We just thought we'd kill a little time. Time ain't all you kill, sister. Deal me out, boys. How have you been doing your first day on the beat? How's she been doing, he asked. <laughs> Haven't had a bit of trouble. Everybody's been wonderful to me. That's good. Laura like a home? Mm-hmm. Funny, I thought she was having dinner with me. Well, I guess she misunderstood. 88, no make on the license. Uh, you haven't had dinner yet, have you? No, and I'm starving. Well, let's go. Isn't this a bit irregular, the managing editor taking the cub reporter out to dinner? Miss Peabody, as far as I'm concerned, you're not a cub reporter. You're the boss's favorite niece. <laughs> and a deal like that, how can I lose? You get her in a poker game, Doc, you'll find out how you can lose. <laughs> 47, no make. Profit, eh? Roger. Good? Mm, wonderful. I was crazy about that sub Ionic. Where'd you learn to play poker? Winners Club. One of those poker joints in Lindbury? Mm -hmm. It's quite a racket they've built up. It's too bad, too. They shouldn't allow those clubs so close to College Green. Too many kids get the poker fever and spend so much time drawing to inside straight they flunk out of college. Cigarette? No, thanks. I don't smoke. It's really a shame. Those dives should be locked up. Well, there's a bill in the legislature now bars private gambling clubs within 10 miles of a university. However, it's buried in committee. Suppose we got it out. We? How? A crusade in the Illustrated Press. Pictures, editorials, sob stories. Uncle Amos, you know, just loves a crusade. Yeah, don't I know. Well... Don't you like crusades? When they're news. I'm old-fashioned, Susan. I've always believed a newspaper should publish news. Wouldn't it be news if we closed up those gambling clubs? Trouble is, people who want to gamble will find a way. Clubs are no clubs. Listen, Mr. Wilson, have you ever been in one of those joints? <laughs> then do me a favor. Go out to the winners' club with me tonight. Get into a game and watch the people. And then decide if they shouldn't be closed up. All right, I will. Maybe this is my lucky night. Come on, Marcus. Wait a minute, big shot. You didn't pay for the cigarette. Go buy yourself a mink coat, baby. No, life was never easy for Mother and me, even before Dad died. California's supposed to be the land of sunshine and gold. Well, you can't eat the sunshine, and the gold never seemed to stick to Dad's fingers. You see, he was the black sheep of the family, the one who wouldn't keep his nose to the grindstone. <laughs> I bet I'd have liked him. Oh, I'm sure you would. Everybody liked Dad. Everybody but Uncle Amos. Uncle Amos would never have anything to do with him. I never even saw my uncle until I came to Big Town. He was just a legend. A legend about a mean, grasping old millionaire. <laughs> was I surprised when I met him for the first time? Oh, Peabody's all right. Why, he's a darling. Look at all he's done for me. Brought me east, paid my tuition, rented me an apartment in College Green, gave me an allowance. Well, there's the winner's club. please. That'll be a dollar for each chair. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mac. Sure. Okay, Chuck. She's at table 14 with that guy off the Illustrated Press. Good. Mark, come in here. What's she been doing all day? She left her apartment in College Green at 9, drove her crate into Big Town, and went to the press. She was at the... 
Mark sent in O'Hara. O'Hara? Coming right up. She was at the press an hour, then she went to the city hall. Stayed there until 7.30 tonight. She got into a poker game, the press room. Ah, uh, she would. You want me, Mr. LaRue? There's a peasant at table 14 I want you to take care of. Check. So? At 7.30, Wilson took her to dinner at the Green Lantern. They left the lantern at 9 and came on out here. All right, you know what to do. I'll wait for you here. Up far. I'm out. I'll stay. I'm in. Five more. Cool. I'll see you. I'm in. All black. Let's go in and think you had it. I've had enough. Good evening. I believe it's your deal. You come here often? Every night. How are you doing? It's my third stack. I guess it's not my night. Huh? <laughs> I'll have a new deal if you don't mind. Next time, deal off the top of the deck. I don't take that from nobody. You were dealing bottoms when I saw you. Why, you lying piker, uh, you! Wait a minute, wait a minute! What is this? Let go! Let go! Stick around. Deal the cards. What's going on? Let Back it! Let go! Let go! Let go! Hold it, Monk. Why not? Get him on his feet. I'll handle this. Uh. from the big town. <laughs> How'd you get in the act? Preston got Flash and Harvey phoned me. You might have been killed, Steve. How do you feel? Never mind now. What's the story? You were found unconscious on the 9th Street Causeway. What happened? Oh, I got out of line in someone else's territory. The Winners Club, one of those poker joints in Limbury. Caught a dame cheating and... Where's Susan? Susan? Is that who you were out with? You didn't waste any time, did you? Never mind the sarcasm. What time is it? One o'clock. Call home with us, see if you got in all right. What's the phone number? I don't know. Look it up in the book. Uh, College Green. Nurse, where's the phone? In the hall. First turn to the left. Thank you. Nurse, where's my coat? On the chair. But if you want to play safe, you'll stay in that bed the rest of the night. Thanks. Get me another cup of coffee, will you, please? Did you get her what she say? There's no answer. Two mugs. That big dame working for the house. All I was framed. Taking Peabody's niece to that clip joint, what did you expect? Fanfare and an awkward corsage on the house? Here. Thanks. Taking her my eye, she took me. She's been living there practically for months. She didn't learn poker and journalism 7B, you know. What time did you say it was? I think it's time you call the police. Okay, let's go. Room. Yes, Sergeant. 81, Vermont and Gary, a woman down. Yeah. I see. Thanks. Well, the Dicks went out to the witness club with a couple of Lindbury bulls. She wasn't there. Claimed they never saw her before. Didn't know when she went, where, or how. What happened to her car? Some woman phoned in a stolen car report at 11.42 p.m. Mm -hmm. No, my guess is no. All units, keep alert for a woman age 20, red hair, 5 feet 2, weight 115 pounds, believed to be in the hands of kidnappers. They're not using her name. No, I asked them to keep it on the secret file. No use building up a scandal if she's all right. Shouldn't we phone Mr. Peabody? 
We've got to tell him, Steve. If it is a snatch, he'll have to pay the ransom. Stop talking like that. Ah! Rats! Try the number again, will you? Oh, why don't you try? Can't you see I'm so jittery I can't dial? She's home. For a girl who's supposed to be at work at 9 a.m., that little number keeps late hours. Oh, quit it. Do you want to take me home now, or do you want to wait here and talk to her? I'll wait. Poor kid. She may have been out looking for me. Maybe she's worried. You hope. Oh, lay off, will you? What would you say your number was? Now he can dial. RB1, 4692. She was there just a minute ago. Do you suppose she has a party line and the other party's using it? With Peabody's influence, would she use a party line? When you got that busy signal before, you just dial the wrong number, that's all. Well, what now? Louie, don't you ever sleep? Not if I can help it. Looks bad for the kid, huh? What kid? You don't have to play dumb chum. Dumb chum. <laughs> I'm a poet, huh? I thought you had those dicks in your pocket. Don't blame the dicks. They didn't tip me off. I got other sources. You don't have to worry anyhow. I wouldn't give it to the Chronicle. Press room, Wilson speaking. Yeah. You'll check the wheel for prints, won't you? Thanks, I... They find her jalopy? Where? In a vacant lot outside of Big Town. Well, that's bad. Snatch, all right. You think so, Louis? Cinch. Come morning, that winners club mob will put the pressure on Peabody. Wonder what the little filly will bring on the hoof. Well, if I run into any angles, I'll pass them on. Wait a minute, Louis. Come here, come here. Sit down, sit down. Louis, you pick up more dirt around here than 17 street cleaners. Okay, suppose the girl has been snatched. We're gonna need an intermediary. Huh? Go between, Louie. Go between what? Oh, quit stalling. You know what I mean, and you're elected. Hey, look, Lorelei, don't let him do this. Louie, before we can put that girl in circulation, we've got to know the score, and you're the only one who can find it out. Please, if you think for one second we've that been I... good friends, Louie. Why, why, we've been batting around the city hall for a long time now. It's been me for you and you for me. You wouldn't let me down now, would you, Louie? Oh, baby, you're killing me. Oh, I... come on, Louie. Well... Okay, but I'll see what I can do. Attaboy, Junior. Come on, I'll get going. Well, no use stalling any longer. I'll have to call Peabody. Press room, Lorelei Kilburn. Thanks. No prints on the steering wheel. Well, that wouldn't be Susan. Well, that cinches it. I'll have to call. Oh, missed it. I never should have given her that apartment in College Green. If she hadn't been living by herself, going around with those college kids, she'd never have heard of the Winners Club. I made a mistake bringing her here in the first place. Oh, you're only trying to be kind. Yes, but look what I've done to her, the poor child. They won't hurt her. They'll only shake you down. You better start worrying about yourself. What do you think I care about myself? To have her back right now, I'd gladly pay. Yeah, very well, I'll wait. It's Louis Sneed. Steve? We ought to get a squad of cops, go out to the Winners Club, and round up the whole mob. We've been over that before, Mr. Peabody. We have no evidence. We can't even call in the FBI until the kidnapping has actually been established. Yeah, Louis. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, I got it. Thanks, Junior. Louis made contact with someone who's in touch with the mob. What do they want me to do? They want you in the southwest corner of 5th and Grant at 10 o'clock this morning. You must be alone. I just have time to make No, it. no, wait a minute. You're not going to pay off, are you? Well, I might. Why? It's the wrong way to handle the snatch. Why, if that mob shakes you down without any trouble... Steve, my niece is in danger. If I have to pay, I'll pay. I want that girl back unharmed. Miss Whitley, call the detective bureau. Tell Captain Murphy to have two of his best men meet me right away at 5th and Grand, northeast corner. Got it? Yes, Mr. Wilson.
second desk on the right, Mr. Peabody. Nice of you to come, Mr. Peabody. I'm Charles LaRue, managing director of the Winners Club. How much do you want? Now, about that stock. It's a block of 50,000 shares of common stock in the Winners Club. Par value, one dollar per share. I'll sell it par. The stock is already made out in your name, Mr. Peabody. Make the check out to me, Charles LaRue. I see. You'd be very slow if you didn't. I think you'll find this an excellent investment. Of course, the stock has never paid a dividend. Maybe it never will. But every investment has intangibles, values which can't be reckoned in dollars and cents. Quite. Good morning, Mr. LaRue. Good morning. Deposit this to my account, please. There you go. Here's your stock, Mr. Peabody. You'll find it a very good investment. All right, boys, take him along. What's all this about? You'll find out at headquarters. What's that? Stock in the Winners Club. $50,000 worth. I just bought it. Not good, Mr. Peabody. Not good. Come on, Harding, what's the rap? Did you talk to the cashier? He told me the money had been legally deposited in LaRue's account. For the last time, Harding, I demand that I be allowed to phone my attorney. He has a point there, Mr. Peabody, of course. However, take him down and book him on an open charge and bring him back. What did the corporation commissioner have to say? The Winners Club is a legitimate corporation. LaRue had a legal right to sell that stock. The commissioner said if you want your money back, you'll have to go to court. I don't care about getting the money back. I want Susan back. Harding speaking. For you, Wilson. Thanks. Yeah? What goes, Steve? Oh, I see. How long will you be up there? I'll call you. Louis, they have a man in the DA's office by the name of LaRue. He just shook Peabody down for $50,000. Chuck LaRue. I was afraid of that. Goldilocks, this whole caper smells. And that babe with the innocent look. What does Steve Wilson want to go taking her out for when him and you... Maybe he only did it to make me jealous, huh, Louis? Maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't. But Goldilocks, if he's given you the runaround... Louie, you're just a sweet sentimentalist. Well, this whole caper smells. Forget it, Louie. If anything goes wrong, no one will blame you. I know, but... Darling, I'm terribly sorry I'm late, but my car was stolen last night, and I had to spend the night with a girlfriend. Girlfriend? Yes, Mona Lawrence. And we got to talking over coffee, and time just slipped by, and... Include me out of this. Steve wants you to call him right away. Oh, is he all right? You know, there was some trouble last so night. So I heard. I'll get Steve on the phone for you. Gee, I suppose he's mad at me. Oh, dear. I wonder if he'll fire me. No, I don't think he'll fire you. He'll probably murder you. Steve Wilson, please. Hello, Steve. Oh, I'm all right. I spent the night with a girlfriend. Well, never mind that. I'm in the DA's office on the 14th floor. Get up here right away. And bring Lorelei with you. He wants us both to come out of the DA's office right away. He says it's... Never mind what he says. Come on. Fourteen, please. Okay, Susan, start talking. About Steve? Oh, I think he's wonderful. You didn't mind about his taking me out last night, did you? Why should I mind? Well, I thought maybe there was an understanding between you two. Your understanding wouldn't... between me and Steve is that I'm quitting 13 days from today. 
Susan, would you be interested in knowing that your night with Mona Lawrence cost Mr. Peabody $50,000? How? Never mind. Well, I don't see what I did that was wrong. There was some trouble at the women's club and Steve disappeared. I waited a while and decided to go home. My car was missing, so I called the police and told them it was stolen. Then I took a bus and went to Mona's. Weren't you at all worried about what happened to Steve? Of course I was. I kept calling his house, and finally I called the office, and the operator told me he'd come in and gone out on a story. I presume you know my niece. Sorry, I've never had the pleasure. On the contrary, Mr. LaRue, you cashed a check for me once, remember? I've cashed checks for so many people. That's all, LaRue. You're free. Now, wait a minute. This man just swindled me out of $50,000. You're not going to let him get away with it. I didn't swindle you out of anything. You bought some stock in my club. Sure I did. But that was on the assumption that he had my niece. You led me I to believe... I don't know where you got that idea, Mr. Peabody. I never mentioned your niece. Well, right, now look here. This is nothing but an open and shut case of fraud. And I'm going Take to see Take it easy, you. Mr. Peabody. I'm sure your investment is going to pay off. Are you through with me? Anytime you want to get a check cash, drop in. Excuse me a minute. Now, young lady, just exactly what happened last night? Wait a minute, LaRue. That was a very clever trick. But don't get the idea we're through with you. That's just part payment on last night's account. Down. And I spent most of the time telling her about my new job. So, there it is. You should have phoned the office this morning instead of sitting around chatting with your friend. I never seem to do anything right. It wasn't your fault. Forget it. It was my fault, and I'll never forget it. I've caused you nothing but trouble and expense ever since I came here. I'm going to give up and go back to California. You're doing nothing of the kind. You wanted to be a reporter? Very well, we'll make you a reporter. I'll get back to the press room and go to work. Oh, Uncle Amos, you're a darling. Coming, Lorelei? Now, Lorelei's staying here. You're on your own, Susan. Oh, Susan. No one knows anything about this business, so don't talk to Wally or Harvey. Oh, of course not. What was the idea of stopping me with LaRue? LaRue wasn't as smart as he thought when he sold you that stock. We're going to use it to close up the Winners Club. Yes, and every other club in Lindbergh. That's a worthy ambition, Mr. Wilson. And not an easy thing to do. Of course, there's that bill before the legislature. Buried in committee. We'll dig it out of committee. Will you cooperate, Harding? Absolutely. Good. We'll use a full-page spread with pictures. Lots of pictures. We'll put on a good old-fashioned muckraking expose. And what's more, AP, I'll get your money back. Lorelai Kilburn, Sergeant. Anything? Thank you. Everything's quiet. Are you sure you won't need me any longer? You've had a hard day. Go home and rest. You're so kind to me, Lorelai. I do appreciate it. Forget it. Good night. Good night, Lorelai. Good night, boys. Good night, beautiful. Take it easy, Shin. Hiya, Scoop. What's breaking? Same to you, sister. Hey, you guys, that Hawkins story. The dicks are holding out on you. The dame sang two hours ago. I had a hunch they'd try to pull a fast one on us. Come on, Wally. I'm giving them the runaround. The dame's still clammed up. They'll murder you. Let me worry about that. You know, I've been thinking. And? Little Miss Innocence ain't on the level. Her act with Steve. Please, Louie, I don't want to hear any more about her or... Don't try to kid me, Goldilocks. You're carrying a torch like the Statue of Liberty. I didn't think it showed. Well, it does. Are you going to be a sap and let that piece of no good fluff break you two apart? I'm sure Steve knows what he wants. Well, it ain't what he wants. And most of all, it ain't what you want. And between the both of us, we're going to straighten them out about her. She's palsy wowsy with more wrong G's than a, than a bail bond broker. What am I saying? You know Jake Sebastian? Should I? Top man at Chuck LaRue's mob. Yesterday, right here in the city hall, I seen him talking to her. So? So. Take that shake down. Say that Chuck LaRue had Steve framed. Say he had Susan's car stolen. Say he had her trailed out to her girlfriend's house. 
Say that he knew she'd be out of circulation until morning. What I want to know is... How he'd know she wouldn't check in here until after 10 this morning. Ah, so you've been thinking about it too, huh? Naturally. Okay, do something. What should I do? Should I be bothered because her uncle is shaken down for $50,000? Should I care if Steve Wilson is making a fool of himself over the girl? Don't give me that, Goldilocks. You care all right and plenty. All right, I care. So do I. I was the go-between on that deal, you know. I was double-crossed, too. Okay, Louie, I might do a little checking. Okay, kid. You go into your dance and I'll go into mine. And tomorrow we'll compare notes, right? Right. When we get through with her, they'll be putting her face where it belongs, on, on iodine bottles. Hello, Lindbergh Eagle. City desk, please. Hello, Hanks. Lorelai Kilburn. Fine. I want to check up on one of your new cub reporters, Susan Peabody. No. She claims she worked for you. Oh, I see. Thanks. Not more than half a column, Joe. We're tight now. And when we break that Winners Club story in the final... Okay, then kill it. I'll be ready any time. Be with you in five minutes. Hello, Jimmy. Lorelei? Are you in on this Winners Club thing? Lorelei's covering a political meeting tonight. Republicrats united. <laughs> Very important. Ah, you lucky girl. Steve, I hate to mention this, but I've been doing some checking on your new reporter and... Very interesting, Goldilocks, but I can't go into it now. I'm going out to the Winners Club. We're going out to the Winners Club. To play this thing right, you need some human interest angles. Very well, I'm your girl. Uh-uh, that's out. This job is too dangerous. If it's dangerous for me, it's twice as dangerous for you. I'm going. You're not. I am. You're not going to the Winners Club tonight. trouble you caused last night, Wilson, you and your friends aren't welcome here. Do you want to get out peacefully? We're not leaving, Maru. Oh, no? Keep out of this, Monk. You too, Marcus. Remember I told Mr. Peabody his investment would pay off? Well, he's assigned a stock to me. Only a piece of this joint, I have a legal right to enter it at any time. So, if you still want to put us out, hop to it. What do you say, LaRue? Seventeen, take away eight. I don't know. LaRue, how about a shot of you and the boys? Oh, no. The boss don't like his picture took. Call Mr. Wilson's cab. One cab. Coming right up. Well, thanks. It was a successful evening. We got some nice pictures. Give us a good spread, Wilson. Bad publicity is better than no publicity. An aphorism, Mr. LaRue, which I hope to disprove. Come on, Lorelei. Pardon us. Come on, O'Brien. Well, I, 
I never expected it to be that easy. No, we're not home yet, Goldilocks. Straight into big Listen, driver. Your cab is in the garage, and the guy that stole it is in jail. They didn't beat you up, did they? Good. I'll send in a bill. I'll okay anything within reason. How are they? They're pretty good. I'll have some more when they're washed. Anything familiar about that girl? What's on your mind? That suit. The Bonton shop. There are hundreds like it in Big Town. Uh-uh. It's an original. It came from Paisley's and it cost plenty. You can't fool a woman. What you're trying to tell me is that the girl is Susan Peabody. What you're not trying to tell me is how Susan can afford an original Paisley on the allowance that Peabody gives her. Do you know how much he gives her? No, but I know Peabody. So you know Peabody. So I know that suit and the girl that's wearing it. What's it prove? Plenty. Only suddenly you've gone stone blind. Well, Laurel, you must love limbs. You climb out on so many. Very well, Steve, you asked for it. Here it is. I checked with the phone company. Susan has a one-party line. When I got that busy signal last night, Susan was home in her apartment. You dialed the wrong number. OK, pass that one. The girl never worked for the Lindbury Eagle. Well, don't all would-be reporters lie about their experience? We'll skip that one, too. Now, see if you can knock this one out of the lock. She never stayed with Mona Lawrence last night. Mona Lawrence hardly knows her and hasn't seen her for weeks. So she told a fib. A fib? Steve, she's not only a liar, she's pure poison. Are you going to write that story on the Windows Club, or shall I give it to a rewrite man? How do you like that girl? Susan has a one-party line. Did she get that one? She didn't work on the Lindbury Eagle. She did stay with Mona Lawrence last night. Does she think we're, we've been asleep? Yeah, we've known all that since noon. If we hadn't been so busy, we'd have been able to do something about it. Well, we're not too busy now. Hey, this is pretty good. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's fine. Excuse me a minute, darling. Don't go. Yes? Oh, hello. Oh, no. No, you didn't get me out of bed. I was wondering. Mind if I drop around for a while? Why not? Fine. I'll be over in 20 minutes. Bye. Bye, darling. You were sweet to bring me home. What's the matter? No more of that. Why not? Let's stay healthy. Your boyfriend's beginning to get wise. He ever finds out about us. So you're scared. Look, I know him when he's jealous. He'll blow his top. Oh, so I'm getting the brush off. Don't get sore. I know a brush off when I get one. And I won't forget it, not for a minute. Now get out. That's the way you feel, sure. Good night, baby.
was nice of you to come and see me. Nice of you to let me. Well, cozy the little place you have here. I like it. I planned to stay at the sorority house, but Uncle Amos insisted that I take an apartment. Now I'm glad I did. Yeah, sorority sort of a uh, cramper girl style, if you know what I mean. I'd be pretty dumb if I didn't. How'd you make out of the Winners Club story? Fine. When that blast hits the Capitol, it'll be all over but nailing on the padlocks. Did you get some good pictures? Now, don't tell me. I was there. Oh? I wanted to see the fun, so I went out. Then your cameraman started making wild shots, and I had to duck. I was afraid that Uncle Amos might be peeved if he knew I was there again. Uncle Amos is already peeved. I know. I'm so... sorry. Sorry? Sure, sure. Are you also sorry you lied to me about working on the Lindbergh Eagle? You don't hold that against me, do you? No, but you shouldn't have lied to me about uh, staying with Mona Lawrence. All right, now, tell me the truth. What really happened last night? Well, when I found out my car had been stolen, I called up my boyfriend and had him come out and pick me up. We drove around for a long time, and then about 2.30, I came back here. I needed a coat. It was a cold night, remember? Mm-hmm. How long did you stay? Oh, just a few minutes. Then we went out again to a few late spots. What did you call while you were here? Oh, well, I didn't call anyone. But my boyfriend did. Just who is this boyfriend you're talking about? He's just a boy. College boy? Of course. He, uh, wouldn't be connected with that LaRue mob, would he? Oh, heavens no. He's just an unsophisticated kid. He gets mad whenever he finds out I've been gambling. He's told me again and again I should stay away from those places. If he's that concerned, he must think an awful lot of you. He does. He's frightfully jealous, uh -oh. too. I wonder if, <laughs> if he should happen to come by tonight, would you mind going down the fire escape? <laughs> yes, I could just picture myself. It wouldn't be the first time, would it? Would uh, that be your boyfriend? He bores me. It uh, could be for me, you know. I suppose you told everyone in the office you were coming here. No, no, just uh, Fletcher. Hello. Just a moment, Mr. Fletcher. Thanks. Yeah, Fletcher. Uh-huh. All right, tell him I'll be right along. All right. Your uncle's leaving for the Capitol in half an hour. He wants to see me before he goes. Sorry, I have to rush off. When Uncle Hamas talks with the herrings, the train seals bark. Tell me, Steve, do you also balance a ball on your nose? No, stop pouting. It was sweet of you to come and see me. My honey, see you in the morning. Yeah, see you in the morning and maybe uh, tomorrow night. Bye now, darling. Bye. Agency. They needed a smart private eye, so... Well, they hired you. Huh. Some shamus. What kind of a case are you on? To get the goods on this two-timer tomato, her old man will pay off. Well, keep your nose clean. Hello, Junior. Hi, boy. No, no, look. Hey, what are you doing here? Hey, take it easy. That's my... Come on, come on, give. What are you hanging around here for? I'm checking up on that Peabody dame. Who's paying you, Lorelei? Oh, come now. Don't be a cad. Let's keep her name out of this. And if you want to know something, you ought to be ashamed what you're doing to that girl. All right, Louie. Have fun. But I suppose you know you're playing with dynamite. What do you think you're playing with, marbles? Uh-uh. Dice. Loaded dice. And I'll be seeing you. Hello, baby. Early, darling. Business was slow. Jake got you home all right. I'm here. You're not jealous of Jake, are you? I'm jealous of everybody. Chuck Quick. Haven't I a right to be? After all, you're my wife. It's about time you started treating me like a wife. What are you talking about? Jake. It wasn't his idea to trail me around all day yesterday. Oh, baby, you're just a kid. That was a big deal. 
And to be sure it was set up right before I sat into it. You picked a fine guy to follow me. As the Green Lantern, he was so obvious, he almost tipped the play. I still don't see what was necessary. You can't blame me for trying to protect myself. I only blame you for not trusting me. Does that look like I don't trust you? Is it all here? It's all there. 50,000 bucks. If I don't get any ideas, half of it's mine. No, darling. All of it is ours. Okay, Uncle Amos. Penny pitching old skin flint. Now, what do you think of your favorite niece? A millionaire, and he puts me up in a place like this. He buys me a car, a second-hand roadster. He gives me a fur coat, rabbit, and jackrabbit at that. I get an allowance, 30 bucks a week. And you know how he lives? I can guess. Do you know how he dresses his daughters? Mink, no less, okay? Starting tomorrow, I wear mink. You don't want to crowd your luck, baby. Maybe I do want to crowd my luck. When you have the cards, you play them, don't you? Okay, so we've got the cards. And we've only started. We've got 50,000 bucks. And pretty soon we take him for another 50,000, and after that... What's the matter, Chuck? Quit dreaming, Susan. We got 50 Gs, and we were lucky. Have a smoke and cool off. You know very well I don't smoke. Who's been up here? Stop it! Stop it! Who was up here? Jake. Jake, huh? My good friend Jake. So that's why you put on a fancy outfit. That's not true. I put this on for you. Jake only stayed a few minutes. Long enough to smoke a couple of cigarettes, huh? And long enough to make a couple of passes at me. Which you brushed off, of course. Yes. That I'd have to see. I've been watching you two. Darling. Shut up! Hello, Marcus. Chuck. Jake there? Okay, now look and get this straight. As soon as Jake comes in, I want you and Monk to take the car. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Peabody. I had a little business. Look what the Chronicle's running. Amos Peabody, publisher of the Illustrated Press, has bought a block of common stock in the Winners Club. It was revealed today. The Winners Club is one of several private gambling clubs now operating in Lindbury. That changes everything. Why? In the light of that story, our blast against the gambling clubs is not an expose. It's a publicity stunt to build business for the Winners Club. Well, it certainly looked like that, all right. Now, what does that make me? Appearing before the legislature and asking them to pass a law closing a club in which I own an interest. Well, they'll say that's a publicity stunt, too. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Run the whole story of the shakedown exactly as it happened. However, that means dragging Susan into it. Steve, I'm afraid she's already in it. Well, I'll have Lowell I write the story right away. When you get back from the Capitol, we'll see what we can do about your $50,000. We'll see what we can do about Susan. Your taxi's waiting, Mr. Peabody. Well, good luck with the legislature. Thanks. Lowell I there? Yeah. Set him in, will you? All right. What do you want, Steve? The Chronicle's running a story on Peabody's buying that stock. So we've got to run the story on the shakedown. The straight, unbiased, unvarnished story of what happened. Will you write it? No, tonight? Naturally. We can't use it as a follow-up. It'll look too phony. Wait a minute. Steve Wilson. Wilson, this is Chuck LaRue. I understand you're running your big story on the Winners Club tomorrow morning. Now, look, Wilson. Why don't you talk it over with me? I realize all that, Wilson, but what have you got to lose? Well, boss, here we are. Ordinarily, I'd be glad to come to your office. To be perfectly frank, Wilson, and I don't dare stick my face in the big town until some of this heat is off. No, I'm not at the club. I'm in College Green. Wilson doesn't know where you live, does he? The address is 595 Oak Street, apartment 402. I've got it. I'll be right over. Did you hire Louie to watch Susan's apartment? I certainly did not. What's he doing there? How would I know? Where are you going? Susan's. Why the heater? It's a cold night. You're humorously. 
Look, Steve, you're only sticking your neck out for what? For Peabody's dough, they're 50,000 bucks. Don't give me that. You don't care about Peabody's dough. You have your mind on Chuck LaRue. So he beat you up last night and showed you up today. Why not forget it? Forget it? Are you kidding? Now get on that story. Send Fletcher in here. Fletcher, Steve wants you. You want me, Steve? Yeah, Fletch, here's the play. The room wants to see me. He just phoned from Susan's apartment. Here's the address. Susan's, eh? Well, I'm not surprised. And neither am I. Now, look. If you don't hear from me in 40 minutes... I'll be out there with a carload of cars. No, no, that's no good. We've got nothing on the rue yet. Get a couple of the boys in circulation. I know just the pair. And stand by for a call. I'll be waiting. Not yet, Goldilocks. Now, listen, kid. But... But... Put down a fin for me on Wee Willie Winky in the third at Hialeah. A fin on Wee Willie Winky in the third at... <laughs> Steve just went upstairs. You better hurry out here right away, Lorelei. There's something cooking, and I'm afraid it's too hot for me to handle. Okay, I'll be waiting for you in the lobby. Up five. You're five, and up you five, boss. Are you nuts? <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> I'll stay. How many? Two. One card. You? I'll play these. Dealer takes three. In the kitchen. Come in, Wilson. How are you? Fine, thanks. I believe you've met the boys, Monk, Marcus, and Jake Sebastian. Sure, hi, boy. Hi, Wilson. A little game you're having? Yeah, Postman's Holiday. Mind if we finish this hand? No, oh, go ahead. Well, cozy little place you've got here. I like it. Take you open. Uh, 20. 20 more. There's still time to kill that story, isn't there, Wilson? Plenty of time. I'm saving it for our final. You guys are awful brave betting into a pant hand. I'll call. And 50 better. What are you so proud of? 50 more. You sure you don't want to change your mind about it? Story? Can't. It's enough to me. It's up to Peabody. If it's persuasion you were looking for, you should have invited him here. You'll do. Yes, I think you'll do very well. What do you say, Monk? It's a hundred to you. I'll call. I mean, what do you got? Four deuces. Deal, Jake. Look, LaRue, if there's something on your mind, let's have it. Don't worry, I got plenty on my mind. You want a drink? No, thanks. What will people say when they find out the managing editor of the Illustrated Press owns a piece of the Winners Club? When they read the paper in the morning, they'll find out just how the whole shakedown was engineered. And they'll say that LaRue and his mom ought to be run out of the state. Why don't you sit in here? <laughs> no, thanks. Too rich for my blood. Table stakes, as much as little as you like. Okay, send his life. What do you have? Take a hundred dollars. Your deal, Wilson. No, no, it's Sebastian's deal. Go ahead, Jake. Jake doesn't like the deal. He doesn't even like to play poker. Jake just likes to play with dames, don't you, Jake? Yeah, Jake is a great boy with the babes. He can make more passes than a leather neck with a pair of crooked dice. <laughs> He has a particular yen for other guys' wives. You got a wife, Mr. Wilson? No. Nope. You're lucky. I mean, with Jake around. What are you kidding here, Chuck? Just kidding, Jake, old boy. Just kidding. You won't need a rod around here, Wilson. It isn't that kind of game. Just a big, happy family, huh? Okay. You crossed me up very neatly, Wilson, running that shakedown yarn. I'm surprised Peabody would want to get his niece mixed up in a sordid story like that. You don't know Peabody. He's a tough old guy. I wonder if he's tough enough to take what I'm going to dish him. Baby, come in here. Mr. 
Mr. Wilson, meet Mrs. LaRue. I've already met Mrs. LaRue. Found her very charming. She's charming, all right, but not very smart. No? Who planned this caper? Who dragged Wilson out to the winner's club and set the deal? You did, dear. Well, what do you mean, I'm not smart? Sit down, baby. Deal her in. Nobody minds? Six hands. Nice game. Yeah, set is shy, though. That's better. Open for five. What do you mean I'm not smart? Put it on the line. I'll stay. Would a smart girl knowing me very well play around with my best friend? You staying? Yeah, I'm in. Me too. Look, LaRue, I don't know what you and your marital problems have to do with my running that story. Cards? One. One card. Two cards. Look at it this way, Wilson. How would Amos Peabody like for it to be known that this kid here, this green pea from the West, came into town and made a sucker out of her uncle? He won't know anything about it till the paper hits the streets. He'll know it if you tell him right now. Peabody left town ten minutes ago for the state capitol. Get a bill through the legislature, that'll close you up. Then you're the only person in town who can kill the story. Right. Wrong. Check. 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 Bet 10. You don't seem to understand, Wilson. There's a story breaking right here that'll back your Winners Club story right out of the newspaper. Mark, Marcus, on your way. You got your stories. Hey, what goes? Sure, sure, Sit down. Marcus, why do you tell the cops? You and me and Monk was playing poker here with Jake and this guy, Wilson, and the dame. I mean your wife. Yeah, then we got a call from the club. Trouble with a couple of the peasants. And me and you and Monk hopped in a car and hightailed it out to Lindbury. Leaving? Jake and this guy, Wilson, and the dame. I mean your wife here alone in the apartment together. OK, on your way. Pull the car around in the alley and wait. I'll be down the fire escape. Scram. OK, boy. Okay, what are you doing? Half that dough is mine, and if you... Shut up, you two-timing tramp. Half that dough is mine, I tell you. Don't you think you're going to powder with it? Yeah, the money's half yours, all right, but where you're going, baby, it won't do you any good. You can't phone the cops, Lorelei. If there's nothing wrong up there, that mob will sue you a paper for a million bucks. Come along with me. But Louie... Come along, Goldilocks. Leave everything to Louie. That ain't good. Let's take it. Yeah. Get up in the back of that truck, you guys. In you go. Now listen, you mug. Ah, come on. Never come mind on. the yak the yak. Get in the truck. Come on. Get in. Get in. Drive it around back in the alley. Yeah. Then I'll get the boss's car and bring it around too. Crazy idea, I've been playing around with your wife. Quiet. Chuck, you're insane. I lied to you about Jakey. Chuck, listen to me. Chuck, please. Myself. My name? Wilson. 
Steve Wilson. Six, three oh four. Are you sure you know where you're going? Sure, I cased this joint all night. Come on. Twenty seven, five nine five Oak Street, apartment four oh two, a shooting. have traced the car back. Well, what are you waiting for? I want to hear a proud car. There it is. It's a nice setup, LaRue, but you never get away with it. Why should the police believe I killed these people? You'd been playing around with my wife. So had Jake. When the boys and I left you here, you and Jake must have got into an argument over Susan. You evidently blew your top. I trust this gun is registered in your name. It is. But you can't have a suicide without powder burns. Let me take care of the powder burns. Don't touch the gun, Louis. His prints are on it. His Peabody's 50,000. Steve, she's still alive. Oh, too bad. Look, Kelly, I'm not interested in clinical details. Will she live? Okay, Kelly, keep in touch. Well, here we are. Where's Fletcher? He's swearing out a complaint against Monk and Marcus. Kidnapping, conspiracy, accessory before the fact. Hey, they left one out, parking in front of a fire hydrant. Yeah, they booked him on that, too. They better. <laughs> well, what do you think of it? A beautiful blast, huh? Will it turn the trick? Will it turn the trick? I guarantee that within 30 days, every poker club will be closed up tighter than a Puritan's lips. How's Susan? Kelly just phoned from the general hospital. They've given her transfusion. They say she'll live. Good. Hey, them mugs will need bond. Thanks for everything, Louie. Okay, Junior, no charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we call it a night? Oh, now, Louis Snead. Now, there's the character. He's brash, he's sharp as a tack. He's hepped all the angles. You know, I think Louis would make a pretty fine police reporter. But still, I guess I already have a pretty fine police reporter. Laurel, I, you're not really going to leave me, are you? Well, I... Are you? Oh, Steve, you big lug. Hey, this building's on fire. Call me when the walls get hot. Uh -huh. 